Oh. Who should we ask? Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the February 8, 2016 Selectman's Meeting, which is rescheduled today till February 10, 2016. Anyone wishing public comment? Seeing none, we'll come to the board. Mr. Waddell? Uh, yeah, yes, yesterday was an exciting day in New Hampshire with the primary. Uh, it was great to see that we had a record turnout across the state, that people were exercising their right to vote, and some people won, some people lost, but the people have spoken. It was great. Mr. Bridal? Yeah, it was well over 7,000 voters in Hampton. That's that's quite a few for the for this small town that showed up and voted. I'd also like to congr congratulate all the people that participated in the Penguin Plunge this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, they're better people than I am for jumping in that cold water. <laughs> so, thank you. And Mrs. Wolseley? I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, it was an extraordinary turnout, and uh, Mr. Welch, uh, the town clerk, uh, all the volunteers, and yeah. uh, the employees, Public Works, and everybody that supported that event, uh, it, it was remarkable. It went off without a glitch, and they did a fabulous job. And that would include uh, right on top with uh, Mr. Casasa. Thank all of them, please. Thank you. Next, we have the consent agenda. Number one, we have 2016 veterans tax credit requalifications, a number of them. Number two is 2016 new veterans. And number three is FEMA community rating system letter. I'll so move the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Our first appointment tonight is Christy Pulliam. Please join us at the table. How are you doing tonight? Good, how are you? Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you. Did you have another one? Oh, I have another one. Oh, sure. All right. Okay, I always give a couple So tonight I'm here to do what work. We'll consider the final unaudited pass on the monthly financials. Um, you guys should have received these, I believe. <clears throat> sometime last week they should have been in your mailbox and they are on the town's website the 12th report for 2015 so the target is 100 percent motor vehicle income total for the year came in at 3.2 million which is 474,000 above the budget or 17.19 percent above the target and 219,000 ahead of 2014 the other major contributors to the year's income total of $8.34 million were payment in lieu of taxes at $246,000, interest on taxes at $354,000, fire permits at $20,000, building permits at $320,000, state of New Hampshire at $1.3 million, departmental income at $671,000, rice sewer agreement at 113,000, parking lots at 509,000, land rent at 166,000, franchise fees at 246,000, uh, insurance reimbursement from LGC at 228,000, and the real estate trust at 646,000. Um, when I was at your re meeting in January, I had given some facts on increases and decreases to revenue. I'd like to note at that time I had stated that the real estate trust came um, in lower than 14 by 190,000. However, we hadn't received the final um, distribution from the real estate trust, so it actually only came in 46,000 less than 2014. I just wanted to point that out to you. And I also would point out that the total revenues were 746,000 higher than 2014 and 478,000 higher than the estimated revenues that were used when the tax rate was set. The expense summary shows the year-to-date expenses by department. At the end of December, the operating departments with open POs but without debt service were 98.33% of the budget, 
which is 1.67% below the month's target of 100%, or under budget by $390,000. Shows, uh, I also included in here the year in savings report is showing a uh, savings of 351,000 and compared to 2014 at 357,000. So only like a $7,000 difference there from one year to the next. The figures above reflect the information as they are known at this time. I remind everyone that these are unaudited figures and there is still about a week and a half before I will have the trial balance that will be provided to the auditors. That's changed now since the auditors will be here next Monday. I'd done this a week or so ago. Um, and the trial balance changed just today, so with journal entries and closing out the year. Once I have the final pre-audit figures, so once the trial balance is ready to go to the auditors, I will generate another quick report for you guys just showing exactly what went to the, aud um, to the auditors before they began their review of our financial statements. And then next year in the town report, and well, way before next year, but we'll have the audited figures from them. Um, and I think that was all in regards to the monthly financials. I don't know if there's any, you want to do questions on those or go on to? Uh, yeah, anyone have any questions on this side? Uh, just that, you know, I mean, things turned out really well this year. I mean, we, we had a, money at the end left over. Um, there was some question during the year what was going on. And right. <clears throat> turned out pretty good. Uh, we did have an increase in revenue this year, a fairly substantial yeah. increase in revenue. And I'm always thinking that, you know, is that something that we figure is going to continue that increase in revenue or is that something that at some point is going to start to decrease and we have to make sure that we're making long-range plans to handle that kind of thing, the, uh, the increase and the decrease. And also it would seem that you know, do we to take a good look at the at the budget, and and see you know what was over budgeted, under budgeted, you know where we're going in the future. Get a little bit more advanced looking in our outlooks, but uh, you know overall it looks good and very good. Thank you. The only uh, the only I look going through it is uh, you know, and we we've, we've talked about this in the past is the the amount of savings we had would now. Um, utilizing the assistant town manager as our as our negotiation part of it, um, I noticed there's quite a substantial savings there. In legal, yes, there In was. Legal, there really, it's, mm -hmm. it's almost fifty thousand dollars. So, Correct, because I think that line item was for fifty, and it came in very low, like right. in the less than right. hundred or something. So, um, you know, people have, people sometimes ask why we had that position in there. And why why we have him and that and that right there shows a, a good cost saving. So thank you. Other Not that, even just for negotiations, all, all so many things like just employee so, so many related. Other things, I mean, he was in my just, office today helping me. You know, right? So. That's just one of the many things and one of the many reasons why uh, it's working He's doing so well. A lot of work now on the sewer break yep, issue yep. and things like so that. He has a lot of resources. Excellent, have him in there and. and that was just one way we can see a cost savings by having that. Yeah, that line item, Rusty, was 35000 was the budget, and seventy four was spent on it, the one you were referring to so, in particular. Thank you very much for your report. Mrs. Wolseley. Um, on the first page of your report, Christy, and by the way, the date says February 3rd, 2015. Oops. It's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that, the, the reason I'm pointing it out, though, is that now at the deliberative session, I got a little flurry of paperwork, and none of it had dates on it. And if you go back and try to research for something, and it's got the wrong date on it, it can drive you crazy. Right. And with the, I think it was the contracts that I got several pieces of paper, and I couldn't tell what came first, the chicken or the egg. So the dates are, are uh, important. 478000 higher than estimated revenues. Um, what effect did that have on the tax rate? The the four hundred seventy eight thousand didn't wasn't used well, for the, the tax rate. Well, the four hundred seventy eight thousand. If we, I know it's an estimate in September. Correct. When we're doing a, like three hundred thousand or whatever we're anticipating coming in, but as you get closer to the end of the year, uh, and t or closer to tax rate setting time. Uh, it, I, I'm not complaining. Four hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars higher is great, but I'm wondering what effect that would have on setting the tax rate. 
if we had more money coming in than we thought we would have, would that mean that we paid more in taxes because we didn't have the offsetting revenue to consider? Uh, unfortunately, that 478000 came in after the rate was set. Okay. That's an increase. We try to maximize revenues as we go along during the year. Right. The state gave us more revenue this year than we anticipated. That Rooms probably, and Meals is the biggest contributor to that 478 I'm not is my that, guess. That, about that, that. that probably won't continue, oh. uh, knowing the state. And uh, so um, we, we, we can't use it as an adjustment against the rate. That's why we ask the selectman every year when we set the tax rate uh, how much money you want to take from the reserve right. balance to, to decrease right. the rate. That 476 will go against that if, you, if you make million. that decision. Okay. Um, I did have to chuckle because on your second page you will be at our meeting on Monday, February 11th. I don't know where that came from, but um, probably no Monday the 11th this year. Oh. But it was a nice try, Christy. It was a nice try. On the At the back, uh, the very last page on the wastewater system development charge. Yes. If I may make a suggestion, I went through that. And it shows a balance in December of 114.061.78 cents, but that's the leftover after we um, took three chunks of money out to do projects related to the wastewater treatment plant. I went back. I hope my math is correct. I've got a total of 196,421 dollars and 53 cents. Can we put some kind of a line or something in there? showing the total that we got from that charge each year or the running total yeah i can i had added this expenditure column because i thought that would be helpful so that you would know what you had spent from it and what right the actual and, and that's now. that's a good thing to see because um, we we saved um uh let's see we took out eighty two thousand three hundred and seventy dollars that the taxpayers didn't have to pay for to do improvements to the wastewater treatment plant but I think it would be nice to see I'm, I'm very fond of that charge it would, I think it would be nice for the taxpayers to be able to see at a glance as the fees come in over the year the actual accumulation of the fees uh, and then what we drew out um, bear with me because I have I think that's it for that. On your unaudited financials, are we? I'm off the the expense statements. Is it all right to go to the unaudited financials? Okay. I you yeah you were kind enough to give us the this says 2016 too. Um, the 2014 unassigned fund balance five million four fifty seven five oh five and that. I remember was uh, what DRA had to uh, to work with the tax rate, but then the estimated unassigned fund balance, the five million eight twenty three five seventy seven. I know you haven't had the audit yet, but you think that's pretty close. I think that's a little high. I um, actually, Fred and I discussed the, how this is calculated, and I was going to change this report up a little bit this year, mm. but. Um, I decided to go with what the exact report that has been used in the past yeah. um, by Mike and possibly Donna too. And when I calculated it, I think I came up with like 5.3. So I think the 5.8 is a little high. But like I said, I decided in the end to not change things up because I seem to change things up and it mm -hmm. haven't been so popular lately. So, so 5.3, you would have reduced the 2014 figure? Slightly, yes. If, and I'll, when I was calculating the unassigned fund balance, I was strictly looking at the um, overages and revenue along with the under expenditures. Okay. And so I had about 5.3, I think, at my first round when I was changing this report. And then when I went back and put it in in the same exact format that has been done in the past, yeah. it came up with the 5.8. So. Okay. So that's or between there. So that's reasonably in line with what we should have it's reasonably should in line with what we should have and what we've had for the last couple of years like i mean it's a, about four hundred thousand more than what we ended 14 with six percent seven percent perhaps of 
of what we should be holding in case of I thought the percentage was on dire here. emergency. Yeah, it was between was eight it on and nine, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. I thought it was at eight yeah. something, but oh, okay. I don't see it on here now. Because I, I think it. the spread is five percent to seventeen percent or That's something. Correct. Yes, it is. Yep. Okay, and you had your end of the year cash balance. That was a good uh, a good sheet. Now on the year end savings. And that's got the wrong date on it as well. It says two nine fifteen, but that that was a good sheet. It shows budget and less debt, which I assume is your your debt service. Mm -hmm. And then to the right, I, it says unexpended below. And I'm not. There's a difference in there. That that's the. I'm trying to figure out where that came from. What? Because if you look at the debt service, and the debt service shouldn't be changing, I've got my figures from the from my budget book. Debt service, the last year, you don't have on here, but for 2016 it should be 2986297. dollars Why would there be a discrepancy in the in the debt service? Because I think the debt service that is in the budget, right? Yes, yeah. but the, that debt schedule there, um, in 2015, the Church Street came on. So when that was prepared, we didn't have the SRF loan agreement yet. So we we're just we use our best estimate of the rate is 3.15%, I believe. So we calculate it out. And then once we receive the uh, loan agreement, the actual payments will be put in. So there could be fluctuations. We should have finished paying that, that debt service in 2015, right? So why, so do we have money? I'm trying to figure out how we could end up by having money left over from debt service that should, should be a fixed amount. I was just puzzled by that. This debt, oh, here it is, debt service, 3289872 and it shows actual 2997278. How can it vary like that? Because when the 2015 you mean budget... when you consolidated? When the 2015 budget was prepared, yes. we did not have the loan agreement okay. in place for the wastewater treatment project that had an SRF bonding, nor did we have it for the Church Street pump station. Okay, so I've got a, let's see, 2009 waste. We signed water. both of those in 15, I believe, correct, Fred? There's the bond, the bond refinancing I've got. Okay, and 2011 wastewater? No, it wouldn't be 2011 wastewater SRF, would it? I don't have that information no. with me down okay. here. I just know that just, in 2015 there was two loan agreements that came okay. through with SRF funding, and I thought one of them was with the wastewater treatment plant, one of those projects, yeah, right, Fred? It was. Yes. And one I of them we was consolidated. The some debt too. I just thought that I've always thought of the debt service as a fixed, you know, principal and interest. It is. It is until you actually incur a new debt. Okay. Which is what happened during the course of the year. Okay. Debt service itself does not legally have to be appropriated. Okay. It's an encumbrance against the town's general fund. Okay. Hmm. Is that it? Okay. I believe, Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Director. <clears throat> um, great work as always, um, and really superlative work through the uh, budget process this year. You talked about a net increase in revenue of how much? Four hundred and seventy-eight thousand. Four hundred seventy-eight thousand, and as we look at that, that's great. And we talk about uh, increased taxes. We talk about increased fees. We talk about all of those great things. So we're up ten grand a week. Um, <clears throat> we have yet to hear about um, our increase in pension costs that will accrue to us this year. Um, you mentioned that the uh, disbursement from the trustees of the trust fund is down forty, fifty thousand dollars Is that correct? Forty-six thousand, yeah. Forty-seven. Mm -hmm. So the, off of that four hundred thousand, we're down to three fifty. How much did our uh, health insurance go up this year? Uh -huh. The average was seventeen point three percent. It went up quite a bit. And ballpark figures. What are you at? A couple hundred grand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, there is no increase in revenue, per se, when you go to the bottom line. There, there is actually some revenue, but uh, uh, um, no matter how fast we build in this town, uh, no matter uh, how we try and contain our costs, there are associations with our performance of this corporation that uh, are, are uh, seriously problematic in terms of 
uh, how we are going to fund uh, our infrastructure improvements. Uh, there is no real gain in revenue when you go to the bottom line uh, because our expenses are wiping that out. We're not talking about anything with the BTLA. We're not talking about the abatement process. Our pension costs um, are already expensive. They're going to get very expensive when this state comes in this year. Our property casualty rate remains to be seen. So this is all fine to say that we've increased revenue, but at the end of the day, um, we're not increasing revenue. And this spiral, uh, is, uh, as you look at it from a business standpoint, uh, is alarming. Um, we'll hear from uh, Mr. Jacobs uh, later on tonight about a serious infrastructure challenge we faced. Uh, you will uh, note the fine work you did on Gatsby and the requirements. We are losing $2 million a year in depreciation of our physical assets. That is an expense that is a government mandated expense, uh, a reporting requirement. So we are coming to professional grade. So when you actually look at the totality of this, uh, I just want to make sure that we realize that uh, this is in $400,000 extra and that it actually, because of our operating costs, because of our infrastructure challenges, because of the cost of doing business, it's actually going into the red. Um, this, this begs the larger question when we, we listen tonight to, to, to uh, um, further uh, Jim's and Rusty's great comments is, uh, um, again, <clears throat> come back to it. And I know people talk the 100-year money. I'll raise it briefly, but uh, we've got a boatload of money sitting in that real estate fund and a, and a, and a disbursement of five or $600,000, especially when we hear what's going to be costing tonight as we look at this. Um, people, perhaps over time, may want to reconsider their position on that as we go forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Director. Thank you. <coughs> thank you for so far. Would you like to continue? Yes, we have the also um, a presented to you in your mailbox the investment policy. This yes. is just a yep. standard. I We didn't, Ellen Lavin has reviewed it um, and nothing changed except for hopefully all the dates. Hopefully I caught all the date changes that needed to be in here. But other than that, it's the same policy that has been brought forward last year and for several years before that. So if you guys would be kind enough to approve that, I think Fred has the original up there for you to sign tonight. So. We need a motion on that, Fred? Yes, that would help. I'll make a motion that we accept the uh, Hampton investment policy for fiscal year 2016. I'll second it. I have a question. Oh, we have a discussion on that. Okay. Yeah. Discussion, Mrs. Wilson. Oh, okay. Um, does this relate to our treasurer only, or does this relate to the trustees and treasurer, treasurer? only? Treasurer only. Okay. Just thank you for clarifying. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify that too, that that because so that people don't get confused. Right. This is just this, for this the, is the town funds treasurer. the yes. town treasurer, right. has, yes. yeah. and how those funds are correct kept. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, Good. And um, and is this something that's online that people can see if they want to see the uh, investment policy? I don't believe that it is, but it could be. I don't see why not once it's approved. It was, but Hmm? I, I don't. I don't go searching it because I always. I know. I know. I guess, I've never so. posted it, but I. <clears throat> I, I just post thought it would be good if people wanted to come and they wanted to see. You know, they yeah. wanted to look online yeah. and see yeah. how the money's yeah. being handled and stuff. That would be a good thing That's to fine. do. I will post it up with the financial reports. Yeah, that would be Thank good. You. Thank you. Good. Okay. Okay. That was the last thing I had. That's it. That's Put it for me. For you. Can I? Motion second. Oh, I have okay. one question. Oh yes. Yeah. You had given us this little report on the finance on the unaudited. Right. That's the town report, yes. I just figured you should have a copy of what I had put into the town report. Yeah. And I, you gave a good definition in the first paragraph there of what the unfunded, uh, mm -hmm. the unassigned fund balance yeah. is, yeah. which I think is good. Is this also something that, that people can see? That's, that's going to be in the town report. That's going to be in the town so report. So then I believe once the town report is printed, then it will be online also. Right. So if mm -hmm. people have a question on that, they can see it in the town report yes. and they can get a definition and they can understand yeah. what they're talking about. Yep. And I guess I don't know if there's any harm in posting that ahead of time. I can put that up with my monthly financials if everyone would like me to. I don't know what the guidelines are in regards to that. But it was just what I had um, That's good. was putting into the town report. So I was doing that at the same time as the year packets were coming out. So I just added well, I thought it, it was a good the explanation pad, so. in, in good nice terms and right. good for people to read. After my done voting, I have another question for Christy. Okay, all those in favor, unanimous. Just one quick question. Yep. Chris, you mentioned somewhere in the, all the paperwork something about that you expect the audit to be done by July. 
Is there a reason why it's going to take so long? I mean, last year we sweated it out because it it's took always, a long time. It's been to, in July for as long as I can remember. Since we switched it to the um, later date, we used to have our audit done like the second week in January. Right. So then it was done in time for town report. But ever since it moved to February or March, whenever it takes place, okay. I believe it usually is in July that it is completed. Yeah. And I think that is what's in the contract that we just signed with them, oh, too. Okay. I was wondering if some of it is because you're imp implementing more GASB. Uh, We're not implementing any GASBs this year. I hope. Nothing this year. I hope. <laughs> I hope. You don't have to, uh, the pension liability? That one is all done at the state level, so there's nothing well, extra okay. for us to do. Okay. Right. Yeah. So uh, midsummer is a good, reasonable time to right. hope that we get the figures. Yes. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good job. Thanks. Have a nice evening. You too. Next, we have Chris Jacobs, DPW Director. Mm. Or Chris. Thank you, folks. Good evening. Thank you. And this is request for trash and recycling collection at Royal Sands Condominium. Yeah, there's been a request um, by the uh, Condominium Association. Um, with all these requests, I, I don't promise them anything. I say that it's really up to the, to the Board of Selectmen. Um, but with the recent uh, agreement to pick up recycling containers at 68 Kings Highway, and I think there was another condo association that had containers out there, um, the name escapes me at the moment, I want to say the words on the street that we can or we would like to increase recycling. As a as someone who's you know favors doing the right thing in the environment, I'm all for it. Uh, accepting that our uh, highway operations during the summer are kind of like a seesaw, and when we hit the 13 weeks, it tips dramatically to the solid waste side. And as we've talked about here. I go down to two, maybe three people most days. I can't even put a crew together to fill a pothole or to, to come other some other project other than single man operations like let's say mowing the landfill or roadside mowing, something replacing a stop sign. Um, so my concern and, and discussing it with the manager was that um, I felt the board needed to be aware and that's why it was such a lengthy mem memo from our time route study two years ago, we realized it, you know, if every container about 20 feet or 100 feet apart, let's say driveway to driveway, it was basically on average taking about two minutes to pick up a container. So great, you could pick up 30, 40 an hour. Uh, but what happens is with, now I have, uh, I'll have 10 recycling containers on Hilliard to pick up, or we are picking them up already. We have 10 more trash containers on Hilliard to pick up. We pick up more containers on uh, Juniper, uh, Litchfield Drive, which is off of Juniper. All these things are gonna add to the length of the routes. When we did our time study, we shifted a number of streets around and we've maximized uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, with Friday being, you know, most of the time the beach and the guys, if there's anything that was missed or additional, it, it's kind of come onto the Friday route. But there's no more room on Monday through Thursday to keep pushing the limit, per se. Um, so it's going to get, we're going to reach that point, we've already tipped the balance, if you will, with summer operations, where we're going to need another driver in another truck because we just won't be able to get the job done or we'll be asking for let's say overtime within the budget uh, to get it done and we may be talking a you know a, a nine hour day and then it could go I suppose a ten hour day there either way it has a direct cost to the town and where you folks help us put together the budget we bring you what our needs are and you try and find us a way to pay for it um, it, it, this is a cost issue, so it's a level of service issue, and it's it's stretching that particular part of the department very thin <clears throat> for those 13 weeks during the summer. So um, I caution you: if you approve it, 
others will probably come in for their condos and we may if we continue to pick up more and more people we're going to be maxed out so are you picking it up now what happened is i think yes there's like i want to say two or three containers that are there i think one of them was issued to um the person came in on a saturday or sunday and said hey i live at 590 whatever oh okay got a container from the part-time guys that work on the sunday mm. the other ones we think but we don't know for a fact are people who let's say sold their property in town <laughs> had, I had them that, I and brought them with they them they were given these uh things went back at the time when the recycling happened he, all the different yeah. condos like that were given them that okay. that's where they came from because i well, can probably remember. the tubs yeah um no we they the went around and gave mm -hmm. recycling bins to several of the condominiums and that being one of them I can remember it. Okay. Fred, we, you should be able to remember it. We have a list. They, gave, they didn't need to have as many. Um, right. You know, everyone didn't need to have one. They didn't have room for it. So they gave a s smaller amount to uh, many different areas uh, along Kings Highway, all over the place. Mm -hmm. There are many places that do this. Right. I think if we have a problem, rather than trying to stop it, I think that we we should have to add more to do whatever we have to do to pick it up because it's fair to these people. And these people have been having it done. Mm -hmm. I walk by these areas. I've seen those recycling bins out there forever. Right. To just stop it, you're going to make people really unhappy. I personally am totally uh, not for that. There are there are those recycling bins go all, all along there. Right at different uh, no, no. condominiums, uh, apartment houses, and that. And this is what people expect from their tax dollars. So that. let's, uh, you want to continue? I just felt like I needed to say that because I can remember we gave those people the recycling. No, I'm, I they didn't just show up. Right. I, I concur with, you know, however they got them, it's, it's something that the people enjoy. Um, they want to do the right thing. They want to help the town. It's so, isn't it a town... Um, requirement that people recycle. recycle and that's that's the other thing so that was in the memo the law. is right now we're paying you know 60 some odd dollars a ton to get rid of trash uh, but we have we are one of two communities in the state that have the best deal on recycling we pay nothing so every pound that they can divert and send the recycling well I shouldn't say we pay nothing but it costs us the haul cost to get it down there but we don't pay that tonnage fee so we have the best deal in the state. Let's, you know, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it, especially for the next five years that we've got to do the right thing. Yeah. So did you want to offer some more? No, I, I, I totally leave it up to you. I, just, I think it's, everyone's it's, read this yep. report. The, Mr. Waddell? If we get more people to recycle, mm -hmm. we have less trash, right? Right. So I mean that that from that aspect it's a good thing. Like it's a said, good thing. From that yeah. aspect. And some condos we don't pick up because it's in their docks that they We've got a list of about sixty one condos, yeah, that we don't currently pick up on. Um, okay. at least knowingly or actively pick up on. But I know like the two condominium associations just down from you. Mm -hmm. On each side. They friend, have them. Yeah. And they all bring them down to the edge of the street. And that's and we so we do pick up some and they pick them up pretty fast. Your two minutes must mean t from to figure it all. Well, it's, they pick about. They could pick. It's the, you, when you average in the drive yeah, time to really empty the truck, I mean. refuel the truck. It works out. Great too. job. Yeah. Oh no, they do. But what is the policy? I mean, <laughs> the, you know, we don't. We we say the the drivers are used to if the carts are out there, they're going to pick them yeah. up. Okay. Yeah. They try not to get into these. Political stuff. Yeah, exactly. Who lives here? No, that doesn't matter. And that's in, in the past. That's somewhat how it started. Yeah. Um, so um, right now they just pick up everything that's out. Period. Um, whether, however, wherever people got their containers, and um, well, we don't, you know, we don't take issue with that at all. Um, as I say, it just gets down to it's an operational thing. And what you're saying to us, which what I'm hearing, just wanted to correct is that if we continue to do this, we're going to have to think about adding to you because we're going to need to necessitate adding. Right, and, th and those vehicles are the most expensive in our fleet. They're going to run about, I think, well, a sidearm pack of the new ones are running 
250 to 260. Mm -hmm. and, um, and they've also been very expensive to maintain. Hydraulically, hydraulic hoses, pumps, tires, the works. So it's, it's a, no, it's a great service, but it just, it comes with a cost. It comes with a, a need. Yeah. But now, I know when you, uh, I know when they first brought the containers around, each address, if it was a house or whatever, was given a set. Right, one and one. If they wanted any more, they had to purchase them. Right. And that's still our policy, correct? Yes. So if, if the condo project wants more, they will have to purchase them. Correct. Uh, and, I, and, and I get your point about collecting. I also understand that they right now haul their own trash. Right. So it, it will be a cost savings for them if they can do the recycling because they're paying less on the, on the hauling. And, so, and, and the people are just, they're concerned. They want to do the right thing. Well, I, I, think, I think the right thing is to pick it up. <clears throat> but we've got to make sure we have the manpower to do that, too. So. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's what the issue is. I would like to just say that um, there's, for anyone that lives along Ocean Boulevard, trust me, you pick up a ton of beer cans, uh, whiskey bottles. I mean, these people, you know, it's amazing that people do go out of their way to try to keep the place clean. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the recycling program, not to mention the trash program, plus the way that the tr trash bins work so much better than it used to in the past before you came here, yep. um, it's really, there's a big improvement of how clean, clean it is the down there. Are, absolutely. And it takes a lot of people to uh, try to keep it going. And, you know, I just, the reason I felt like I needed to comment today because I can remember being on this board, we gave those recycling things to those condominiums. Mm -hmm. It was a reduced amount. Yep. Mrs. Wolseley. Memo from the manager, October 15th, 2014, Condo and Homeowners Association Trash Collection and Roadway Maintenance. Previous Board of Selectmen took actions on a few streets within Hampton where the planning board had written into the condo docs and or homeowners association docs that the subdivision or project was to provide their own roadway maintenance, including plowing, and for the disposal of their solid wastes at their own expense. In cases where the prior board took action, we had been providing those services in violation of the recorded agreements and legal documents. In each identified case, the services were stopped after notice to those improperly receiving the services. In view of the issue, it seems harmless to allow them to bring trash out to such and such a road and have the town pick it up. That, however, can backfire on the town. If you examine all condo projects, they will be in asking the selectmen to pick up their trash if you recant on just one of these legal requirements, etc. You haven't got the manpower, have you? Have you got the not, manpower? Not to keep up the pace. In addition, the transfer station was never meant to have the tonnage going through it that it has now. That is a small station. You know what it takes for upkeep. Mm -hmm. You just explained to us about the recycling and the glass wearing the bottom yep. thin, right? We are going to have to stop providing services to some of these places. Waste Management is a perfectly viable company, and they provide private pickup, I'm sure. I'm sure there is a way to keep the, the beach from being messed up, and the beach is part of the town. There shouldn't be any special consideration for the beach. I remember you uh, were talking with the, one of the PRC meetings to the Timber Swamp Road people, right with the new development and you were told that they were not going to get pick up we can't keep going you can do this but you can't do that those mechanical packers are expensive they are very expensive to repair and we have not got the manpower period we are going to have to resolve this i've been asking this board for the last three years to notify the planning board that on new developments anything other than single family homes or two family, that this community cannot 
provide the waste, recycling and trash pickup. <coughs> we can no longer do it at the rate this town is growing, and it's growing more, and it's going to be growing on the west side, in the Montrone property. And if you think we can pay for this, can you pay for this out of this year's budget, Chris? You mean the actual collection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would just be a... Yeah, and what's a, going to be done in the summer? What's going to be done with grass mowing, maintenance, sweeping, cleaning the sidewalks, cleaning the roads? We haven't got the manpower to do this, and I would say that we are digging our own grave here. We should not be doing this and giving in to, uh, Mr. to this type of, of uh, request. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? <laughs> Great. Poor Chris. Good, good. Um, hey, I just did some math on vision appraisal. I'm figuring that's five more five point seven million dollars of taxable base down there for the Royal Sands. I think I'm probably pretty close to that. Yeah. I think I am. I don't think there's any kids in school down there. I'm in agreement with the chairman. I think we have larger sustainability issues uh, that should not be placed uh, in, in direct contradiction of what Mrs. Woolsey's talking about. Uh, to people that uh, have a tax base of $5.7 million, uh, they probably don't have any uh, kids living in there. They probably don't require the police down there very much. Uh, it's coded. It's updated. Um, a lot of us uh, spend time at the beach. They are constantly improving their property. I never see uh, blue lights on down there. I never see a fire engine down there. So they're going to get trash picked up once a week. It's not, yeah, it's not trash. It's, it's not recycling. Trash. It's just, oh, it's, oh, yeah. Pardon me, but even if, even, if, even if they were no, to have... trash doesn't follow, Mrs. Wolseley. That's not what we're here. That's not at all what we're talking about. Why don't you try to stick with the, what we're talking about? We're talking about recycling. Do you want to read it again on the... Um, you want to read the manager's okay, memo again? I've read it, Mrs. Wolseley. Thank you. And I don't think you heard what the taxpayers, the uh, people when they voted on these issues, that they want recycling and they want trash pickup. So I think you need to take a look what the taxpayer, the voters said a couple of years back. I take a look at what the voters say, and yeah, you okay. don't have voters just okay. at the beach. We're the a town. The voters are everywhere, and we the are voters voted to have what we have, and we're not going to take it away from some people because you don't think it's a good idea. Residents in, in the this whole town. The taxpayers, as far as I'm concerned, need to be treated equally when possible. The whole town. If this is a, if this is a, a condominium that's not, the people can't take two barrels out and put it in front of it when there's, what, 25 condos there. That is nothing. And there was a time when this Board of Selectmen tried to get them to bring their, take the recycling out so that we would have more recycling. We, we had a, we worked to try to raise it above, which we still are at the same level. 30 to 31 percent. Yes. So uh, do we need to do something more about this? Can I just finish, Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Uh, so I emphatically uh, agree with you, and I, I would, um, and thanks for uh, giving me back the floor, um, I, I would, uh, uh, fully support that uh, we alleviate this inequity, and I do think, uh, based on the uh, the revenue, based on uh, what the beach does do for us, is opposed uh, as opposed to uh, some of us that live uh, uh, farther to the west side, that luxurious um, the state home of Mr. Bridal, perhaps. Um, that they, there are special considerations, and I think the chairman's exactly right. And I fully support this, and I think that uh, we ought to support the Royal Sands because they support us with a tremendous tax base. Thank and you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe it, maybe it does have to become to uh, some overtime or whatever. I don't know what the best answer. I, yeah, Mr. I think, Waddell? I think that if we do approve this, that we, that, we, that we make sure we back up the director when he needs extra help or he needs to get it done. So make sure that we don't do this and then leave him out to hang in the end. I have That's a follow-up. Right. Mrs. Wolseley. Where are you going to get the money? Are you going to hire three new people? Not without the board's approval. No, do you have the money in your... No. Thank you. He didn't say anything about hiring three new people. You did. He said he needs three more people if he's really going <laughs> to implement I think he can this. do his job without your help. Did you or did you not mention that you need three more people? Months ago we were talking about Thank later. you, sir. That's not what he's here for tonight. Well, I think it's what he's here Let for. Let him do his job, Mrs. Wesley. I am pleased to have him do his job. Thank you. Would you like to continue? Sure. Um, the second thing I'm here to do is give you an update on the Church Street pumping station uh, force main. Um, I think for the public's benefit, for anyone that's not aware, is uh, February 2nd, 
we discovered that uh, the force main that goes under Tide Mill Creek, uh, basically from the backside of the Church Street pump station, makes a direct line over to the wastewater treatment plant. There's two lines in there. One's a 14-inch ductile iron pipe, and the other one's a 14-inch uh, asbestos cement pipe. Uh, the ductile iron one is the one that broke. Um, we are unsure at this point whether it pulled apart at a joint, cracked in two due to a soil shift, or um, the other possibility is we're thinking is that the num amount of grit that comes off the beach or is collected in the wastewater basically eroded the pipe from the inside to the outside because that's happened before within the plant. Um, so when it was uh, discovered, or uh, we had, in, I should say, we had indications from the state that they were getting a high fecal count in the wastewater or in the, in the water uh, of Hampton Harbor um, and its tributaries. Uh, Chris Nash uh, spoke with the staff. We started our own field testing, and on February 2nd, we had, were actually walking the path of the, the force main and discovered, in fact, it had... Um, it was discharging untreated effluent right out into the marsh. When the tide comes up, a lot of it would then be able to mix with the marsh. Uh, so much so that they were using field radios um, when they observed it. So they called back the Church Street pump station to the other operator and said, shut off the pumps. They did. It subsided. Turn on the pumps. It came right up. So we instantly changed valves, um, put all the flow through the older uh, AC pipe. Uh, it's working at present. Um, the uh, marsh cleans itself. I don't know if you're aware, but about 88% of the waters that are in Hampton Harbor flush in and out every day or with each tide cycle. So um, the um, effluent has dispersed itself. Um, the marsh has, if you will, done what it normally does, and that is uh, cleans a lot of water. So right now we're at a point where we're looking at what the possible solutions are going to be um, to repair this. Um, the ideas that we're floating is uh, uh, opening it up, uh, getting a wetlands permit, digging down the six to eight feet where the, we anticipate the break is, determining what the cause of the break is, probably fixing it in place. It's probably the least costly of the options. Uh, one of the reasons why we want to dig down there and, and take out that one section of pipe and look at it is we'd actually get the pipe out to be able to determine if is it being eroded from the inside or was it just a structural failure or is it um, a joint that just literally pulled apart because it, it came in 20 foot sections and there's literally a bell and a where it's wedged together. So if somehow force is pulled it apart, that could be the solution. If that's the solution, um, we're out for short dollars, less than $100, I'd say. Um, but then it, it begets the question, and we've had many staff discussions internally, is this the path that we want to continue? If we've had issues with the pipe in this location, we could have, it's 4,000 feet along the marsh, over the marsh, under the marsh, we could have other types of situations occur. Do we want to have the pipes lined? Do we want to um, uh, push a smaller plastic pipe through the through the larger one? Um, do we want to find another route? Do do we want to horizontally bore a new pipe under the marsh to begin with? Those are multiple multiple options um, with multiple unknown costs. Um, the next step that we're going to take is next Tuesday, the 16th. We're meeting out there with our wetland scientist, our own engineer, uh, a contractor uh, in the pipe business, and a contractor in the excavation business uh, that predominantly works in these marine type conditions. And from there, we'd probably try and come up with a scope of work. We'd ask the state for a wetlands permit. Um, my, we could ask them for an emergency permit. I, I do believe we would get the emergency permit. And um, <clears throat> then we, I'd be back before this board uh, updating you with what we found out, what we'd like to spend. 
because um, I anticipate the contracts would exceed our spending authority and um, get your approval. Beyond that, I'd entertain questions. Maybe I've said, left too many questions on this table. Mr. Waddell. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, you know, you guys did a great job in, in, in finding it, containing it, setting it off and everything. I give credit to the two wastewater treatment operators. They, they without even me asking them, when they found out from Chris Nash, they went out instantly and started taking. Uh, Mike Carl took it amongst himself, and when I came back in on Friday, he'd already had one round of results, and we were narrowing down the scope area to find the hot, the hot spot. So, I mean, that, that's really good that yep. you've done a good job and you've <clears throat> done a good job of reporting and letting people know and keeping everybody updated, keeping the board updated on what's going on, which is great. And, and the big question is, which you're dealing with, what do we do? You know, what's the best way to handle the problem? Is the best way to fix it, as you said, or is the best way to make a change? Will we end up in prob with problems later on? I mean, it, it's a huge question mark. And I, yeah. You know, I think you're doing a great job, all of you, in trying to come up with a solution to it. I just don't want to, I've talked to the staff, and, and I don't want to rush to judgment. I don't want to rush to a solution that's expedient today, but inexpedient tomorrow. That pipe's only 29 years old. If, do I want to make a decision that then is going to force this town every 30 years to face that same decision again? I don't think so. I don't think that's the right way to do it. Um, but I have to admit that the technologies and the engineering has changed. Um, years ago, I don't think we could have accurately drilled underneath the marsh and, and come out, you know, where we wanted it to come out. We'd have been surprised where it came out. Now the technology has changed. They can, within three to five feet, drill a new line underneath the uh, marsh. But is that the way we want to go? One of the problems with having a line under a marsh 4,000 feet long is I don't have the equipment to clean it. I don't have the equipment to inspect it. Um, there's, you know, there's no way to, to, to get at it. So one of the discussions we're having internally is do we want to continue down that path, so to speak, or do we abandon that path altogether? Part of it will be a, a cost basis and decision. Um, it, the idea was floated four years ago to me. It, it's not a new idea, and that is to lay the force main down 101. Come down that short section of Church Street, 101, right by the St. I want to call it James. the Moses Paul. Hey, James. Was it St. James? St. James, right. Moses Paul Lodge. Um, we have, there's a sewer line there in our own easement. We could literally come right into, possibly come into the, the, the large sewer pipe we have in Tide Mill Road. So there, there, we have options. We're not penned into any one thing. But um, I didn't want to tonight is throw out dollars because I really don't know. But I, I'm, we're just really, we're in a, we've got the, the situation under control, it's stable. Um, I think we can come up with a short-term repair, and then we need to talk about a long-term. I agree, 100%. I think okay. you're doing a great job on it. Thank you. You told us that the line's 27 years old. Yeah. How old is the second line? Older. I know. <laughs> How much older? I, I, I basically know, but I, I think uh, the public needs to know this. Yeah, that... Here? Yeah. 60, it was 60 something as it was put in. Yes. Yeah. So you're talking almost, a, almost a 50 year old pipe. pipe. Right. So it, the, both pipes are not the same, is, is what I'm trying to get. Correct. The, the, the newer one is the actual one that has failed. Yeah. That's right. And the other one is, is, is a cement asbestos line pipe. Right. It's 4,000 feet across there. It's a long way to go. Like mm -hmm. you said, you have no manholes. You have nothing. I think you're doing the right thing. I commend you guys for, for getting on it fast. Mm -hmm. I know we had the penguin plunge, and there was some concern about that I've heard from people. You guys did an excellent job testing the waters, making sure that people were safe. You have a backup plan if that second line fails? We do. I, I think you're going in the right direction. Thank you. I think you, you, you've got all your ducks in a row, and we'll know a little bit more after the 16th. Right. So thank you. Thank you. 
This is Paul's site. Chris, when you talked to us about this initially, you mentioned something to the effect that sand, and it had never occurred to me before, but if you go to the beach and you come in and you're all sandy and you go take a shower, mm -hmm. the sand is going into the line as, long as, as well as the water. Is there any way for you to intercept the sand instead of letting it go through because you mentioned there's possibly a wearing effect where that's continually going through the pipe and rubbing any way to intercept that at the head end is there any type of strainer or mechanism that no we, we we do intercept a, a, a large percentage of it um actually in the wet well the the wet well portion of the church the it settles to the bottom when we Three years ago, we had Ted Berry Company, and that's the same company that we're going to be using to do some of our inspection work <coughs> on the 16th. We had them in to clean the Brown Ave interceptor. They said, you know, of that pipe, up to a third in some sections was actually laid with sand in the bottom. Well, they did a, such a good job of cleaning it and got most of it out, but then uh, a good portion ended up going into the old wet well of the Church Street pump station. Uh -huh. They went down, and they, they got all that out, too. Oh, my God. It's it's kind of like dust. Um, you know how you can you can um, swiffer or dust around your house, and, and then you open up a nice spring day, and you open up the window, and you see the light coming through, and there's all this dust flying. That's the size particles that were you can't capture. It, it's it's fine grit, and it's that fine grit that what we're doing is because we push it. It's under pressure, velocity. That's when it wears against the pipe. So you can get out, I can get out all the big stuff. I, get the, I can get out the big stuff that you'd normally see on your kids, uh, on your feet, in your swimsuit. But the, the fine stuff that you have to shower off, that's the stuff that is over, or after 30 years is going to wear through a pipe. This is probably a stupid question, but as part of routine maintenance, do you have the capability of just shutting down or stopping stuff from going in the line and then just blowing it out with yeah, water? It's, or? It's, it's, well, one of the technologies is called pigging. They actually, I didn't pick the name, they actually send a, a pig and it's, it, it's, a, it's a, it can be a rubber pig that you okay. push down there that you'd inflate, but one of the ones that we'd looked at and we've used over on the force main from Sun Valley to basically the state pier portion, that's a that's a force main, is an ice pig. Yep. They literally put in ice and, and use it, it's, uh, and, and use dry ice to actually freeze the thing up, and then under pressure they push the plug through. Mm -hmm. And when it just gets the other end, it melts. Is that but, kind of like a periodic maintenance? Or yeah, but all, understand, all that'll do is, it's like a drain cleaner. All it'll do is scour the walls once. But if the walls, you know, of whatever's built up on them, or if there's sand built in the bottom, it'll all push that ahead. But it won't do anything to preserve the inside face or the interface of the, the pipe wall. If it's wearing out, wearing thin, it's it's wearing thin. Yeah. Well, it's quite a dilemma. Um, the old, the older of the two pipes is clay. It's uh, PVC no. cement. It's asbestos, yeah. asbestos cement. Asbestos cement. 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 Okay. All right. Now, this you mentioned. So I thought I heard you mention bell joints. Is that what you've got in the old iron pipe? The old ductile iron would have been would have had bell. Because. And it's the same technology we use for water pipes. And the the old, right, the old water line that went up Little River Road from the 50s got to a point where it was blowing out at the bell joints. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had three big blowouts yep. near my house. And then, of course, the Replaced water them. company came in and reconstructed. But, uh, yeah, that's not good, those bell joints. Right. Well, you have a challenge. One of the options I forgot to mention is that they actually can uh, literally send something down a much larger pig, and they actually burst the line, and then we can pull down through that existing line. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen, like, when they do gas company lines now, 
you'll see a lot of that black plastic pipe, and they actually fuse it together so there are no joints. Ah. And what that they did end up doing is we open the line up and then sleeve down through a continuous, well, without joints, pipe. Huh? So that's one of those technology things that yeah. was not available right. when this project was done in 87, but is available now. Right. I like the way you're going about it because this isn't something you're going to solve overnight. You know, to build on what Mr. Bean was saying earlier, um, we have to do things once right. They have to be done sustainably because the taxpayers of the future, 30 years from now, 40 years from now, I don't think it's, they're, they're my kids, they're your kids. It would be unfair to burden them by making a quick... Yeah nickel decision at this time and that's not what we'd like to do we will bring all the options and the cost back to you when we have them we'll work with you to, we'll do whatever we electively collectively can afford and you think is the right thing to do Mr. Bean just one more quick one but for now can we um decrease the probability of contamination are you keeping that line shut down or the, the broken line is shut down we're just totally relying on the AC okay. the AC line okay thank you we've had we've also in, uh, ordered flow meters they came in earlier this week we can meter the flow that we're pushing out of the Church Street pump station okay. we're we're putting a flow meter in the pipe when it gets to the plant we'll be checking the numbers to make sure we're not losing any of that flow Phil likes a clean beat. Mr. Bean. <laughs> we do too, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to uh, commend the Chairman, uh, Mr. Welch, uh, and these two folks at the, uh, the desk of the Director and Deputy Director for their uh, celeritous and rapid response last week to uh, a very important issue. And that's why uh, we at the table here make the big bucks, and that's why you make the big bucks. So um, especially you two and Mr. Chairman and Mr. Welch, you did a fabulous job. Um, you know, to put it in perspective, you look at Portsmouth and what's going on with their sewer system, mm -hmm. this is peanuts. Mm -hmm. does not mitigate the exigency and the criticality of this piece of infrastructure to the beach. And the beach is different, and the beach needs to be taken care of. It's probably $2 billion of taxable uh, base down there mm -hmm. uh, that could be rendered uh, essentially um, worth much less mm -hmm. if we don't do this properly. Uh, in addition, there's business enterprises. In addition, there's everybody that flocks to the beach, and they want to come to a clean beach. And so you've hit it all. I'm not playing public works director. I say you do it right. Mr. Bridal is, is locked on in terms of examination of both pipes to do this thing right. Uh, very, very important issue. Uh, the town stepped up magnificently last week um, in, in, uh, in light of uh, a very big uh, public event at the beach in the water. And I have confidence in you to uh, work with celerity, to work uh, vertically with uh, higher agencies that provide regulatory control over our efforts. Uh, I know we won't get any money for this. This is going to be on us. That's just the way it works. Yeah, not necessarily. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, if, if past history is uh, any any judge. We, but again, when you compare this to Portsmouth, uh, this is small uh, potatoes. But it doesn't mean we don't get it done right, mm -hmm. and that uh, we we maintain the the highest standard of infrastructure on those two pipelines. And uh, we look forward to your report very soon. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Is there a chance we can get some reimbursement, Mr. Welch? We're going to try. Mm -hmm. If you don't try, there's no chance of getting it, so we're going to try. Of course. Um, yeah, and I have to thank you, too, for doing a great job and taking your time and making sure it's done right and that taking all the precautions you have taken. Now, one thing from the, the previous thing, we need to make a motion. Um, and it, Mr. Van Ose's uh, letter is about getting some more carts. Mm -hmm. I think, from what I have understood, the, re the carts were a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. If people want carts in the future, they need to buy them. Right. So, you know, we're not out to be giving up. I don't think he was looking for something for free. Oh, he isn't. On, okay. on, on the carts. No. Yeah. So... Um, and is that pretty much what you do with other what happens for instance if it's a new house that comes along they have to buy them also right? uh, one one of each delivered free right. so everybody on Hilliard all got one they all got one they all got one but if they move 
if they move, the carts are supposed to stay, stay with them because they're, they're given to the property. Yeah. So that's because it's a brand new house brand being new house. built. Right. Talking okay. one of each. We treat them the same way we did when we initially distributed them, and everybody got one, mm -hmm. one of each. And yeah. Roughly tell us but the size. The you people want. were uh, when the people were given um, previously their cards. They were told in the future if something happens and it blows away, you're out to get your own. You have to pay for your own. Right. If they, you know, we regularly people bring them in, tires fall off them, lid went somewhere. We do re, we do repairs because uh, we, we got extra tires, extra axles, extra covers with mm -hmm. each order. So we we regularly switch them in and out. Um, <coughs> I bet we're, well, that's we're doing it's a nice couple hundred a couple hundred a year. It's good to uh, be able to provide that service yep. to the taxpayers. Yep. So do we need a motion about that? I think you need planning on buying them to begin with. I think you need a motion to give us direction because this is I believe the director is correct. We're going to get after this discussion tonight, we're going to get buried in requests. Yeah. And uh, we need some direction from the board as to what you wish to do and how. Well, from the way I understand it and I'll be glad to make the motion is it's one thing if it's a new house lot that's being approved, but other than that, all the carts that are going to be handed out and this is how it's been on the other boards that I was on this is how I understood it mm -hmm. there are no you know that's right. it's something that they have to go and purchase their own yes. so I would make a motion that unless it is a new approved lot that has come not a redo of a home a tear down and then a new home right. just a new lot being approved by the planning board that's the only I would like to make that motion that they receive one of each yep. That's which it. has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. They're just asking for recycling bins, and they're going to prepare to pay for their own. Correct. So is there a second for the... I, I, I don't... I, do we need that motion? For Fred the says way we he's, do. He's... I'll second that. that. Second the motion. I think it confirms what we're doing. Okay. That's all. I just want to make it... Uh, and I can say, I just want to make it clear that we are only doing the recycling part here. Mm -hmm. They are still totally responsible for their trash pickup. Correct. Yes. As and that's all they've their, asked for. They haven't as, asked for trash as pickup. As per their. Right. Yep. This is for this motion is for new lots of record or whatever you want to call them where a house goes in. Okay. Yep. So we have a first. We have a second. All those in favor? Four. I want to be recorded as absolutely opposed. <laughs> One opposed. One opposed. Thank you very much. Or we appreciate it. Lee, may we ask him another mm -hmm. question or, or set something up for the future? Uh, we received the um, ATC Group Services landfill inspection and gas monitoring report. And I have some questions on this. Would you prefer, gentlemen, that we hold this off? I hate yes. to keep dragging yes. Only because in. we don't have a copy of it. Yeah, I wasn't. Right. They're, they're not prepared like to discuss. I just not mentally, with us because we right. weren't prepared for it. But we're, the, we're coming in on the, the 29th. The one question I had when I looked at the purchase um, order report for the end of the year purchases, there is a purchase order in here for fencing. Does that relate at all to the landfill, Fred? I don't know where. It doesn't say where the fencing town goes. Hall fencing. Custom town fencing. Hall. Town hall. Yeah, town hall. Town hall. Okay. Yeah. Because that's one of the things I yeah. wanted to address right. with that. Okay, if we Thank could, you very much for coming in this evening. If I could ask evening. if we put them on the agenda to read. They are here the 29th. The 29th. Their regular report comes on the 29th. That's exciting. Good. All right. Thank you, Thank Thank you for coming in tonight. Sure we appreciate it. Yep. No, nope. well, we have a copy, work but you do. I'll reread it in anticipation of the meetings. Thank you. Good luck, Thank guys. You. Yep. Have a great Thank night. You. Thank you. Approval of minutes, January 11, 2016, revised. I will so move that we accept the minutes Second. of January 11. All those in favor, unanimous. Good. Next, we have the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, just an additional reminder that property owners who desire to apply for tax exemptions in the various categories available under statute, we advise you to see the assessor's office well before March 1st, 2016, to obtain the necessary forms. Yeah. There are state forms that need to be obtained and filled out. If you're not filed by March 1, you're excluded by law from having <coughs> those exemptions approved in 2016. We, if you're eligible for them, we want you to have them. 
So please come in be along before March 1. So that's for all exemptions? That's for the elderly, for veterans, for blind. Uh, there, there are a number of them. Yeah. And they have to come in and fill those forms out. Okay. Uh, those are important. But some of them require extensive <laughs> verification paperwork. So we want to make sure that you get the, the exemption by getting in here to get it done. Uh, otherwise, likewise, those interested in the lower tax rate at the Hampton Beach Precinct must uh, fill out the necessary forms and return to the assessor's office by April 15, 2016. Those forms are available from the assessor's office. Please come in and get them uh, and fill them out and return them, and we will give them to the precinct. And if you qualify, and they're the ones who determine whether you do or do not, uh, you will receive the exemption. If you have not filled out your, well, the absentee ballots per se at this point, uh, we've already had the election, so that's over with. <laughs> Um, item four. And I believe uh, we've talked about the item number four, which is the leak of the sewer pipeline from the, uh, pipe, the pumping station to the transfer uh, to the uh, treatment plant. And uh, that apparent that the, the leak has been stopped. Um, I think the employees down there did a terrific job, um, despite the fact that I think the paper made it wrong that uh, the state found it. That's not true. We did. The state was with us when we found it. So. We've been very cooperative with them. They've been very cooperative with us. I do want to mention that uh, there were some high counts on the Taylor River. This leak has nothing to do with the Taylor River. Uh, there are a lot of septic systems up there, and uh, we're going to have to figure out what's leaking because that's going to affect the harbor as well. Uh, one of the proposals I made Ten years ago or so, was that we get together with the state and federal government, and uh, because of the clam beds in the in the harbor, oh, yeah. and we put in a, a clam cleaning station similar to the one in Newburyport, oh. um, which means those clams can be harvested all year long. They can be cleaned in the, in the plant, and then they can be put out for purchase and sale. Good. Um, I really think that's something that needs to be done just to protect people's interests and their, and their health. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Questions, Mr. All Waddell. Set. Mr. Bridal. And I'll go back on what I've said before is we're gonna, with that uh, issues out on the Taylor River, we have to sit down as a board at some point and yeah. decide what we're going to do about the, uh, the sewer west of 95. And I'm not saying we have to sewer all west of 95, but that section off of uh, Toll Farm Road, uh, Mary Batchelor Road, is about built out as much as it could ever be. Yeah. And uh, we do have some issues out there, and we need to really start to take a, a long, hard look at that after we get this situation straightened out. We need to update the 201 plan in addition. Thank you. Mrs. Wolseley. I have a quick question for the manager. I don't know if you want it under old business or what. Is it, does it have to do with his report? Nope, we'll we're moving on to old business in a minute. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Thank you for your report, Thank Mr. You, Welch. Sir. Moving on to old business, Mr. Bridal, All set. Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, Fred, I noticed, uh, amazingly enough, that, that some of the dead trees in Five Corners Park have been taken down. But what's happening with the wood? Because I saw a gentleman who was loading his pickup <laughs> truck with some of the wood. What? what? We, leave, we leave the wood on the site. All right. Well, some of it isn't there anymore, but that's well, all right. It's it's on public property, so anyone who is a citizen can take it. Okay, that's what I was. Are the stumps going to remain there? Because no, the stumps are going to be pulled, but they'll be pulled a little later because the ground is frozen. Now. They won't be pulled. They'll be ground well, out. They'll be ground down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Have we any plans to uh, perhaps conservation or someone can plant some new trees or a couple of new trees? I've asked Public Works when they finish with their short list, which is about this long. Mm -hmm. um, if there are funds left over to uh, look at these various properties to see if we couldn't plant some trees there. Right. So I'd like to be in on that if possible. And and I think that'll probably be go to the individual department that's responsible for it. There are certain trees that are conducive to uh, to growing in certain types of soils. Right. And uh, we make sure try to make sure that they we plant something that's going to survive. Right. That's obviously the goal. Right. Uh, we also want to plant something that's attractive. Right. Because I don't want to see the park stripped. The dead trees had to come down. No, they're, they're not safe. So I, 
the minute we got into uh, January 1, I ordered uh, the Public Works Department to cut down the dangerous trees. I have a list of them. Mm -hmm. And to remove those immediately up to a $10,000 expense. Mm -hmm. There's $25,000 in the budget. Right. And that's that's a, a default sum. Uh, so as opposed to trying to load everything up front, not right. trying to do that, which is not a good idea, okay. uh, we will wait until after town meeting to spend the remainder of the funds probably in the first or the, the mid portion of the year. Okay. No, I appreciate that because it's long overdue. Thank you for that. Mr. Um, <clears throat> no. Didn't we used to do something with the University of New Hampshire about trees? We did, and I've also asked Public Works, uh, as they're running through this process this year, to apply for the Tree City category, uh, uh -huh. which, which is in conjunction with UNH and uh, several other organizations in the state, as well as the Arbor Day Society. So uh, we're trying to put together a comprehensive program, and that will ultimately involve uh, the utility companies as well. Good. Mm -hmm. And they could, uh, I remember that they used to, I can't remember if it was UNH or the state, they give out lilac bushes. That's the and, state. <clears throat> that's the state. <clears throat> and that type, that they're great. You know, they are the state flower, oh, yeah. and uh, they grow, and they offer a lot of advantages, and they grow easily. So maybe something like that, if you could get them for free. I, I have something in the old business that I yep. forgot. Um, I think I, the, the bill for the local option was killed for the tax in, in, this, in the House. The Senate had a bill for changing the formula on rooms and meals, and we didn't send anybody up to, to testify. Mm -hmm. I got a slight lecture from Senator Stiles that she is up there working for us, and I know it's a pain to go up there, and I know it's a pain. I mean, I should have gone up because I was planning on it, and I didn't. But I think if we're going to uh, you know try to cooperate up there, that if, if a bill is coming up, that if we up and testify, sometimes it's very frustrating, but it does help us in the long run to get it passed. So I, you know, I know that Senator Stiles and, Sen and Representative Cushion have done a lot of work on this, and uh, I feel guilty, and I got a little bit of a lecture on it, and I accepted it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on to new business. Number one, select, we've already That's done, done. that. <laughs> Determination of procedure to respond to petitions for monthly billing aquarium water. Mr. Welch. I would defer to town council, Mr. Chairman. Okay. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. Uh, back on November 2, two th 2015, uh, Carl McMorrin of Aquarian appeared before you for their periodic report where one of the items he mentioned briefly was that Aquarian was going to be seeking to allow monthly billing uh, in, in future in the uh, first quarter of 2016. Uh, the petition to that effect has actually come to pass. Uh, a petition for monthly billing was filed with the Public Utilities Commission um, on January 22, 2016. Um, the petition sought to uh, have the commission grant that uh, by March 1 with the plan to implement the billing change effective May 1. So far the commission has not done anything about that other than to acknowledge the receipt of it. Uh, it's unclear whether the commission is, what the commission is going to do with this, but nonetheless uh, if it does, sometimes as with the WICA uh, water infrastructure conservation adjustment uh, that comes annually. Sometimes what they do is they issue an order and they say, okay, this is going to go into effect a certain date, and then they say, but we're going to give you a chance for comment about that um, by a certain date. Uh, they haven't done that yet either, but that's certainly a possibility. Um, certainly the petition itself has some ins and outs involving not merely the fact that they're changing to uh, want to change to monthly billing, but some other aspects, changing the payment due date from 30 days to 25 days, uh, changing the billing service for metered private fire and public fire service from in advance to in arrears, and uh, seeking to adjust their working capital in their next rate case, which we're always interested in. Uh, 
Um, oftentimes, even if there is a hearing where the public can go in Concord, uh, that's held during the day and uh, held um, in Concord rather than at a convenient place. And 75% uh, of the customers for Aquarian are in Hampton. Um, they cite that this, this idea of monthly billing has been supported by Northampton water commissioners, but of course we don't march in lockstep with them necessarily. Uh, we oppose WICA where they support it. So uh, my suggestion to you by way of a determination of how to proceed is that, uh, number one, uh, we would want to, I believe, su I suggest that you invite Aquarian officials in to explain to you uh, the details of this, which were not available back in November of 2015 was when Mr. McMorrin was here last. Yeah. And then second, at that same evening, uh, allow the public input to you mm -hmm. about their feelings on the subject, changing the, the billing procedures that have been in place for so many years to something different. Um, I think you would want to uh, perhaps put this petition up on the town's website where people can see it once they know that there will be a public hearing if there, if you're if that's your uh, choice um, because you're not meeting next week one way to do that would be to uh, invite the the uh, Aquarian officials in for your meeting on January 22nd um, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why does that go by fast? It does go by fast. <laughs> February 22nd for the for the January 22nd petition, and um, and set it up in that fashion. That's just my recommendation to you. Good idea. Okay, questions, Mr. I, I think it's a great idea. I think if they're changing the billing, and I think especially if they're taking five days off before you start getting. Uh, Mm -hmm. interest added to it. I, th I think the public should have a, an, an option to talk about it, an opportunity, and I think we should take a good close look at it and, and voice our opinion. The interest is not going to be one and a half percent as it usually is on the unpaid, but it's going to be five percent. Yeah. So, so. yeah. Mr. As being one of those people who doesn't have the luxury of having water, I can see where this is really important for those people that do, yeah. and they should have a right to talk about it and, and hear what their concerns are. So I support it. Mrs. Wolseley? I agree. Mr. Bean? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what is the position of Northampton and Rye on this issue? Uh, I, no one has filed anything with the PUC to date. Um, I don't know what their position would be on the subject, but I certainly don't have one to express yet to the Commission in your behalf because uh, you've not formulated one or had the chance to, this would give the option, the availability for the board to come up with a consensus on whether you'd like to support, oppose, or, or comment about this in some fashion. Good. I think it would be interesting to hear uh, um, your efforts um, reaching out to Northampton and Rye, where they stand sure. on this, is the, uh, is the, uh, are the two other towns that um, participate with us as customers of Aquarian. The 5% sounds excessive to me, uh, uh, just as a, as a business person uh, for, for monthly billing. Um, going on, and so this, this hearing that's coming up, and we've been up there, and uh, I'll leave it at that, Mr. Welch. Um, and I'll be quick, Mr. Chairman. Um, is is this a uh, also for a rate increase? That's Adam? coming. That's well, coming as the, well. They've, they're on a five-year cycle with their mm -hmm. rate increases. Mm -hmm. uh, the last rate increase was filed for in 2012. Mm -hmm. So I would expect that they'll file for it in 2017, with the expectation that the order would ultimately come out in 2018. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I would want to say that, as I said, there is an aspect of this that may play into their rate. It affects their working capital um, in, in negatively and positively. I understand. And uh, I think it's important for us to understand where that's going in advance of it hitting us. Thank you. And I, I did read uh, your most excellent work that you provided for us, uh, and I am specifically reading the uh, Public Utility, Utility Commission's January 7th order. And uh, I, I do find uh, some uh, commonality with uh, um, the way that uh, Aquarian is. Um, 
using their water infrastructure and conservation adjustment. And while we may um, have uh, challenges with their terms over 80 years, as Mr. Welch has so rightly uh, pointed out, uh, the background that the Utility Commission does provide, uh, and not to throw the baby with the bathwater, no pun intended, is that uh, this uh, WICA charge is intended to accelerate the replacement of aging infrastructure. And I think that given what we just heard from Public Works and what's going on with our aging infrastructure, I, I think that perhaps there's some uh, symmetries and uh, some lessons that we could learn because they're pumping five million gallons a day sometimes and they're improving their infrastructure. They are coming forward with it in a positive uh, way and they're, they're fully transparent. It's going before commission and I think equally so we should be addressing our infrastructure, we should be assessing uh, what those costs look like and not waiting for holes to come in pipes right. and jeopardizing the beach. So I think there's uh, there's some commonality and there's some, some disagreement over um, uh, expense charges for late payments and we'll get there. But I, I do think uh, they pump five million bucks out, five million gallons out, and we process five million and I think we're on the same team. And I wanna thank you for your excellent work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So where, when would we be inviting the public in? Um, I would propose January, I'm sorry, February 22nd, <laughs> February 22nd. So that's, uh, yeah, this meeting. is like the 10th, yeah. You don't meet next week. Yeah, but I mean, it, there needs to be, you know, Max, I hope you're going to put something in the newspaper. <laughs> he has a newspaper? Yeah, he loves to do that. I know. Um, <laughs> With the board's permission, if you'd like to go that route, I'd also like to uh, have your permission to write to the commission and indicate to them that we are going to be conducting a public hearing here on that date and ask them to withhold acting on the okay. petition until until we give our input. Mm -hmm. Okay, so do we need a motion for that? Uh, I'm, I'm fine if you give me okay, that consensus. I think I'll, we have a consensus. Fine with consensus. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's fine. That's fine with me. Okay. Fine. Okay, great. Sounds good. Thank you so that's much. A good, uh, you know, something that we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Um, other new business, Mr. Waddell? Nope. Mr. Bridal? All set. Um, one thing I was going to ask, how much do Sorry. those trees cost? The what? The new trees that we yeah, would plant? Like if you were going to get a tree. Well, it depends upon the, the caliper size, it depends upon the height. Trees can run anywhere from $200 to $2,000. Mm -hmm. So a, new, a young tree that someone could plant and that could grow in the future, it's like $200? Uh, depending on the type of tree. Maybe what we ought to do is there's always people, at least there has been in the past, and regularly, uh, asking to uh, to have a memorial Donate of a uh, yeah. uh, bench. These trees would be, if, if we would allow people to make a memorial tree, mm -hmm. uh, it would be a lot better than a bench. And it, everyone could enjoy it. It wouldn't blow away. It wouldn't get broken. Right. And I think the people would love it. Yeah, and just put a little stone in. Nice if we had people donate some flowering trees, so we'd have yeah. something nice to look at in the spring. Right. So, and you know, people might get carried away and do something really nice, some type of nice tree or whatever. Whatever it would be. And uh, maybe you know, it, it could only be a positive. So maybe that's something we could talk with Diana about because we'll she's in charge of, of the yeah. the bench. Yeah, excellent. And I, might be good. Mrs. Wolsey. Yes, I have several. I'm assuming that we sent a card or uh, acknowledgement as a board to uh, Charlotte Preston's family. Uh, we have we sent flowers and and uh, and a card. That was quite a yeah. an impressive. It was. We also uh, because they donated the flagpole and the, mm -hmm. the seating area out here beside the town hall. We uh, I ordered the flag lowered to half staff yeah, Friday through Monday. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, Fred is sending along the NHMA uh, updates on the legislation, and I agree with you, Jim. We've got to get on top of that legislation, I think, a little better than we have been. I'd like to schedule a meeting as soon as we reasonably can with the uh, Senator Stiles and the state representatives so we could review, perhaps, some of the new legislation. Uh, a lot of it is so-so, but some of it probably we really should take a hard look at it. So I'd like to be able to review that because those NHMA bulletins are very handy updating us. Um, Firefighter Clement has retired. What are we doing? Are we sending a, uh, a document, a uh, thank you, a um, 
We'll be making something up. Okay. Yeah. Just okay. waiting something from the chief, that's all. Okay. Well, it, it's... Those things normally come from the department, okay. and in many cases, we've had a number of cases where we have suggested making up certificates and other things, mm -hmm. and we've had employees and their families say, no, we're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we kind of wait for them to tell us through the department head. Okay. I just don't want to have someone who has served yeah. the community uh, leave without any recognition. Yeah. I hear you. Mr. Bean. I have no comments, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Closing comments. So I have one more on on uh, select rules, please. Uh, we also have Dennis Blaine from Public Works who had... Yes. 30 plus years yeah. we should be doing something to him yeah. and something that we we've talked about before and we might want to research the issue is at one time they tried to do some pins here for 20 and 25 yes. and 30 year employees plastic pin. they were a plastic pin <laughs> and um, I can probably tell you where mine went I can tell uh, you where but <laughs> we probably had to pay to haul it off to the landfill recycle it yes I recycled yes. it um, <laughs> I would like after, after we, we we think about having some decent made yes employee pins yes 20 25 30 year pins recognition of service recognition yeah. of service pins and could you come up with something <laughs> get back to we us we have a beautiful pin now that's in metal it's a multicolored and uh, we could just simply uh, put a banner on the bottom I'll give each one of you one one of the uh, pins next week All okay right. and we'll take a look at meeting. it see if we can possibly come up with something like that. Yeah, I think we can. it's something we start recognizing our employees when they get 20, 25, Absolutely. 30 years. Yeah. So, and I you. still have one of the plastic pins that was given to me by a, an individual. Yes. So, thank Enjoy you. it. We like, your, uh, we like your design capabilities, Fred. Any other closing comments? <laughs> Seeing none, is there a motion? 2034. Second. All those in favor, 20, unanimous. 30. Excellent. Thank I just need to meet with you briefly.